Hey guys, what's happening? It's Matt Winning at winningstrength.com and today we're going to talk about a topic that I think everybody's curious about and that is why are you failing when you max? So for a lot of us it can be many many reasons on why we fail when we test our newborn RM. So let's get to some issues and maybe it'll fix your problem and then the next time you go for a PR you'll make it with ease. So let's get to it. The last video that we just shot, which talked a lot about long-term thought process as far as training stimulus being acute, delayed, and cumulative. And I think that is a big issue why most people fail on a 1RM because they're not preparing correctly to reach that 1RM. So you'll notice that here at the gym, if you notice stuff on our Instagram, uh, YouTube channels and things of that nature, we don't do a lot of one rep maxing. We usually do anywhere from threes or fives. Now the reason that we do that is because we want to stimulate more muscle tissue. And when you do singles, you're basically training the neurological system. You're not really training the muscular system a whole lot. Meaning that over time, you're probably not going to get any stronger because the central nervous system adapts to training pretty quickly and then it fizzes out. So we only really use 1RMs to test new PRs. But for a lot of people, when they test their 1RMs, they miss their 1RM. Why? Well, A, the first thing is maybe you're just not strong enough. So for a lot of us, what we do is we'll base our, and I see it on the internet all the time, hey, I can do 225 for 10 reps, what should my 1 rep max be? Who the hell knows? Because at the end of the day, I've seen guys that can't do 225 for 20, and they can bench 500. And conversely, I've seen guys that can do 30 reps with 225 and can't bench 405. Why? Because they don't know how to bring all of that muscle tissue into one repetition. That means that they're probably not doing dynamic work and they're probably not doing enough max effort work. So that's one issue that we have. The next issue is we could have a technical flaw. Now it's, it's ironic to me that we are in the age of information and that you can see perfect technique nearly any direction you look if you know where to look. So obviously your average fitness guru on YouTube or something like that is not going to have great squat form. But at the end of the day, guys like Chuck Vogelpool, myself, Dave Tate, and a lot of other people have put out a lot of videos on how to squat properly and it still seems to be the, impa the patient way in order to get to a big squat, which turns half of the people that are in, you know, interested in lifting away. What does that mean? That means that perfect technique can take many, many years. And when you have a technical flaw, let's say we get up to a 400 or a 500 pound squat. If you have some technical flaw and have already reached that level, it's like pulling teeth to fix it. The point is, is that when you first start training, you need to be worried about technique and conditioning alone, not maximum strength. When you start to worry about technique and conditioning, what you start to find is that workouts are not only recoverable, but they also try to reinforce proper technique on a consistent basis. Now, what you want to really avoid is if you're a beginner or intermediate lifter, which some of you guys are watching this, do not grind out a lift with poor form. The reason is that's what you're telling your body to do when it goes into maximum strain. So if you notice when I'm doing maximal straining, my form just doesn't change. And that took a long time in order for my body to fire correctly whether I'm tired or whether it's heavy or whether it's quick. Now the point is is that do not ignore technical flaws. You see people come out of the squat, their knees bow in. You see people round over their back and they just grind stuff out. Well, that might get you PRs for a minute, but it's probably going to cause an injury and it's definitely going to keep you from hitting big PRs once you develop a base of strength. The last thing that I think is super important and should be started in the beginning, we already talked about it a little, is that you're not conditioned enough to hit your one rep maxes. Remember that in the last video, I talked about how when I figured out winning warmups, my squat went from 788 to the world record 832 and then my bench went from a failed 595 to 611 really easy. Now how did I do that? I didn't change anything I was doing with strength training. I changed what I was doing for my conditioning so that the squat would not affect my bench press. The point is is that it was a hard pill to swallow back in 2013 when I figured out winning warm-ups and I had to be in better shape to hit bigger numbers. And a lot of powerlifters screw that up. They might 
hit the bigger sets in the gym, but they're not focused on conditioning, and then that ends up biting them in the butt down the road because now they're not conditioned enough to train and they're not conditioned enough to see their one rep maxes. So we had three factors of why you might be missing your one rep max when you're training. One, you're not strong enough. That's probably leading to the fact that your cycles of training, either mesocycles or microcycles, are not set up correctly for you to be tapered and peak correctly. Two, you have a technical flaw. Your technical flaw is probably causing biomechanical inefficiency and making you less strong and you're too, you're too uh, ego driven in order to back off and fix your technique, which a lot of people are. And three, you may not be conditioned enough to see your one rep max, meaning that you may not be able to have enough fitness level to recover from workouts or you've maxed something else in a previous couple of days or maybe even in the last 20, 30 minutes. Like some people will test their squat and deadlift max on the same day. The point is if you're not conditioned to do that, you're probably not gonna see your best numbers. So remember these little cues when you guys are not only designing your workouts, but also figuring out when you miss a lift you think you should have got, maybe it's one of these areas that's keeping you back. So check those out and make sure that that's not the problem. If you're having issues with this or problems figuring out how to train, come on to winningstrength.com, grab a manual, or come on to online coaching. Talk to you guys later.